My name is Zach Sobiak. I'm 17 years old and I've asked you to sarcoma. You don't have to read that chapter in I've been told I have a few months. Zach was a small kid from a small town in Lakeland, Minnesota. He was thoughtful. He was a deep thinker. A big personality. Jokester. He was the glue for so many of us. You guys know him for Dave? We had encouraged him to explore songwriting. My closure is being able to get my feelings into these songs so they could have something when I was gone. Start the countdown and be like, okay, this is the part of me that's gonna live on. So it was 2012. I was shooting this documentary series about what it meant to live while you're dying. One day, I randomly clicked on Dying Teen Writes Farewell Song, and it was Zach. I fell down, down, down to this dark and lonely hole. His song, Clouds, is how the world got to know Zach. I'd seen the celebrity music video on YouTube. Zach, such a beautiful song. This is for you. Oh my God, this song really touches people in all walks of life. He would have been a big musical force. It's so not fair, it got cut short. A few days after he died, his song hit number one. His music contributed to his osteosarcoma fund. There's a lot more to be done in the world, and I know that Zach and music and love can make it happen. All these people who've been touched by his story and the music he's left behind, that's his legacy. I want everyone to know, you don't have to find out you're dying to start living. <laughs> I'm going to keep talking because what are they going to do, fire me? <laughs> Hi, I'm here uh, having coffee with my friend Laura Sobiek. Um, we're so happy that you're able to join us. Um, my name is Annie Grandel. I am the Y Disciple Coordinator for Net Ministries. Uh, but before I was here, uh, I was a youth minister uh, for a Catholic parish cluster in Stillwater, Minnesota. Um, and for 11 years, and that's how I know Laura. Um, Laura's kids all went through my program. Uh, my first day on the job was a ninth grade confirmation retreat, and her daughter, Allie, was there. Um, Zach came through the program. Um, Sam, Grace was in my Y Disciple small group back when I was uh, just leading a Y Disciple small group. Uh, Grace was there. We met in your living room on occasion. So, <laughs> um, so we're so, so happy you're with us today. I'm so thrilled to be here. Annie. This is great. You know, I love hanging out with you. This is true. <laughs> we, this is very fun. <laughs> um, I, was, I was laughing thinking about this because you're now kind of famous for being Zach's mom. Like, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> just, just yesterday I was dropping my, um, my five, almost five-year-old Margie off at preschool, and um, I had a full conversation with another mom outside. Um, she said, oh, you know, whose kid, are, whose kid do you belong to? What kid do you belong to? And um, we chatted and got to know each other probably five, ten minutes. And then all of a sudden we realized we never introduced ourselves by name. <laughs> that we had this whole conversation as I'm, I'm, I'm Margie's mom. Like, yeah, at right. a certain point we've just become somebody's mom. Yes. So hashtag yeah. motherhood, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so, Okay. You are here because tomorrow, mm -hmm. which is crazy to me, um, tomorrow on Disney Plus, they are releasing a feature film about your kid, mm -hmm. <laughs> about a kid <laughs> who was in my youth group um, yeah. that some people have borderline canonized that I yelled at a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my first memories of Zach are like, Zach, you can't kiss all the girls at the service project. Um, yes. <laughs> Zach, you and Adam Peltier have got to sit down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right? Yes. yes. Um, I would love if Adam's watching today. But um, 
But they're, they've released a movie about your son. Um, for the people who are uh, joining us today um, that are unfamiliar with your story, you want to fill us in a little bit? Sure. So it was um, 2009. Zach had just finished up at St. Croix Catholic in Stillwater. Um, he'd just come off a fantastic year. He loved that school and yeah. his classmates. He was a basketball player. Um, they won their championship that year and he was planning on he'd been laying around all summer and I told him hey, if you're gonna try out for that basketball team you better start moving because <laughs> you have to actually try out this time around you don't just get handed it just because you're <laughs> six feet tall <laughs> and um, it does you've been lazy all summer and this is the first time you moved so if it's still hurting though in a week let me know and he came to me and he said, yeah, it's still really hurting. So I made an appointment. We went, had an x-ray done. We didn't really see any actually getting worse. He'd gotten to the point where he couldn't even bend over to tie his shoes anymore. And so we needed to go for an MRI. And I remember it like it was yesterday. It was the line in the sand of our lives. Hmm. It was November 13th. It was a Friday. An injection into his hip and then an MRI. And they kept him in there way longer hmm. than they were supposed to. And um, the nurse came out and said, the doctor wants to talk to you on the phone in the lobby. And we've been told they'll get you the results next week. Mm -hmm. It's bad. We're not sure what it is. Um, but it's going to be a hard year at the very least. And then after a biopsy about a week later, we found out that it was the worst case scenario. It was cancer. It was osteosarcoma. And um, it's a very aggressive, rare cancer. And that's how we started on the path of we started. Um, Zach handled it with grace. Mm -hmm. I mean, it stunk. Chemotherapy is awful. He was so sick. Um, but he, he wrestled every day to, do, to allow joy into his life. Um, and I don't think I appreciated that as much during the process. Mm. As I do now, you know, when I reflect back and I look at everything he had to endure, mm -hmm. um, I just am so in awe of how he handled it. And then his cancer just kept coming back. And mm -hmm. the place that this cancer really likes to go is the lungs and then other bones. And Zach spread to his lungs. He had, a, he had four thoracotomies, which is a really invasive lung surgery. And then he had um, it spread to his pelvis. Mm -hmm. And so about a year before he died, we found out that he was terminal. We had run out of treatment options. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that was going to make this cancer go away. And um, he had to choose how to, how to do that last year mm -hmm. of his life. And uh, one of the things I asked him to consider was to write letters of goodbye you know, to say those things that are so awkward to say sometimes um, and not miss that opportunity. So I asked him to write letters to his loved ones of just the things that his heart really mm -hmm. wanted to say. Um, so this was about June 2012. And he tried. He, I would check in with him periodically just to see how things are going, and he yeah. would try. He says, Mom, it's just not coming out the way I want it to. I'm like, all right, just pray about it. And just keep trying. Mm -hmm. Well, we ended up being part of a local radiothon where Zach shared his story. He yep. played a Jason Mraz song. Yep, I was there. Were you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yep. And, um, and as a result from that interview, they asked him if there was any of his own music that mm -hmm. he had written. And um, I ended up finding the lyrics to his song Clouds, and he recorded it on his, his cell phone, and I asked him if we could send that to the radio station, and, and we did, and it ended up being Clouds and going crazy, and, and that's how it started. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And here we are. And here we are. Like, it hasn't stopped. Yeah. And along the way, oh my goodness, there have been so many miracles, mm -hmm. so many miracles along the way. Um, we shouldn't be here, but we are. And yeah. that's the Holy Spirit and yep. God's hand in this whole thing. Yep. Yeah, I remember um, I remember the night before that radiothon, he was um, at our youth group. Um, and he was so nervous. Um, and he said, can you just come? 
just be there. Um, and so I, I was there at the, the Mall of America. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, just everything, everything changed so fast. It really did. Um, and you wrote a book. It did. Um, which... Thank you. Is amazing. Thank you. It took me six years to read it. <laughs> That's right. I forgot that it took you that long. <laughs> a little too real. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, and that it, that's what inspired um, this film, right? Yeah, it was. So that was one of the one of the miracles. Um, the only writing that I had ever done was his Karen Bridge site, <laughs> which is a, a blog basically about his journey. And I mm -hmm. used that to write about his medical you know, medical updates for people who are interested. But then I also ended up transforming it into a spot, like using that time to really sit and reflect on this experience, mm -hmm. you know, and just like what God was doing in our lives. Yeah. And that's when I started writing about it. And um, I have a very good friend, Sammy Brown's mother, Anne, mm -hmm. who is also a writer. And she had an agent who'd been reading my blog. And then mm -hmm. after Zach died reached out through Anne and asked if I would be interested in writing a book about our experience. Oh. So without a book even written yet, um, we pitched it to different publishing houses and I got a book deal, like a really good book deal with a big publisher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they wanted a book written in 12 weeks. So I wrote that book oh my gosh. in that summer. Zach died in May. I got the book deal in June and I had it ready by Labor Day weekend. And um, man, what a gift it yeah. was to just carve out that three months to just super hyper focus on mm -hmm. what God had done in our lives and with mm -hmm. this story. And along that, around that same time, Justin Baldoni, the director of Clouds, um, who'd met Zach, he was mm -hmm. the, the producer and director of My Last Days, mm -hmm. Meet Zach Sobiek, a documentary about Zach, spent five days with our family and um, really came to love Zach. And he really wanted to make a movie about um, Zach and his journey and and so that's how we ended up here he took a lot of the material from the book but also interviews from Sammy Zach's yep. best friend and Zach's girlfriend Amy and um, created a, a a film that's based on our story so mm -hmm. it's some of it's just straight up fiction <laughs> um, but that's how you do storytelling in that platform yeah and uh, but a lot of it is true to mm -hmm. the essence of Zach's story yeah and um, I'm so excited for people across the world to see this story and be exposed to it and yep. have a taste of what we went through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, speaking about people across the world, um, if anyone out there has anything that they want to ask, um, if you have a question for Laura, um, feel free to put it in the comments below. Um, we're going to take a break later and then we'll come back and, and ask Laura your questions. So, um, you know, it's you went from being a small town family mm -hmm. <laughs> to uh, being going viral um, and becoming public figures um, while Zach was dying, um, mm -hmm. and then after. Um, can you talk to, talk about? Like, I can't even wrap my brain around that. What was it like um, to have that experience while grieving? Yeah, that was complicated. Yeah. Um, we had to really sit down and sort of figure out what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And so the first step in that was with Zach agreeing to do the, the radiothon. Like, okay, do you want to share your story in this way? Mm -hmm. And he was interested in sharing his story because it was going to raise awareness about childhood cancer and then also help raise money. So he was interested in that. He wanted to do something mm -hmm. to help kids in the future. Yeah. Um, so that appealed to him. But then as the story grew, and then like CNN called, you know, and like, okay, this is bigger. What are we doing here? What, what's our purpose? And so we called the family together and all sat down and said, okay, what, what are, what's our mission? Yeah. What do we want to do with this? And we all agreed, Zach included, that if it was just about focusing on Zach, and glorifying him, then we didn't have any interest in that. Yeah. And, and that didn't make sense to Zach either. Mm. But we decided if we could be a voice that drew attention to childhood cancer, we would mm -hmm. do it. 
And so that was kind of our base mission of like, okay, we can be this voice. We have a voice. We have this opportunity to shine some light on this where other families don't. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to take that opportunity. As the story spread and people began, you know, just responding to it Mm -hmm. in really big ways, um, that was pretty unexpected for us. You know, saying things like, I intended to kill myself today, but I didn't because I heard this song. Yeah. You know, it was obvious to me that that was a Holy Spirit thing, that God was using this story in ways that were just really beyond any, anything that we could do, you Mm -hmm. know? And so that became the secondary mission of like, okay, we know God's got this. This is God's story. It's not just ours. And so we'll continue sharing because of that. But it was a, you know, it it took some struggle. Um, One of the reasons that I I wanted to write the book is because I know it's easy to look at our family and say, oh man, they just have it all together. Look at them. They're just so wonderful, (laughs) you know, and great. (laughs) I'll take that. But um, it was messy. Mm-hmm. It was hard. It was really um, yeah. a struggle, especially for Zach's siblings, I think, mm-hmm. you know, just to have to have that time taken away from them. Yeah. That was hard to give up. Yep. And um, so we had, we had fights, we had arguments, we had tears, um, but we always circled back to what's our mission mm-hmm. and communicating, and we are a family and we're going to do this together. Yeah, and I, I appreciate what you, how you said, you know, you didn't want it to be just about Zach and glorifying Zach because, you know, when I think about this experience from from my little perspective, um, it's something that happened. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't all about Zach in real life either. It was something that happened, yes, to Zach and Sammy and Amy and your family, but it also happened to Kelly and Mariah and Allie and Reed and Aaron and Adam and, and all of these kids who'd known each other for so long. It was, it was really a whole community um, mm-hmm. because it, it is such a small, tight-knit community um, that it happened to. And now that small little community is going to be on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> they are, <laughs> yeah. A lot of them travel to Montreal with us, so they'll literally be on, That's awesome. on Disney+. Plus, so. <laughs> Um, speaking of which, uh, we're actually going to show uh, the trailer now uh, so folks can uh, see what, what we're talking about. Awesome. All right, everybody, put those phones down. Let me holler at y'all real quick. Today is the day we crab your college essays. Yay! <laughs> Question number one, what do you have to offer? And not even just to the university, to the world. What do you want to do with your one wow and precious Life. I still don't understand why she'd want to go out with me. Are you serious? <gasps> You're bald. Among folks? Good morning. He's got a date. Nice. <coughs> I don't like the sound of that cough. <coughs> well, why make it to graduation? None of us are really promised tomorrow. We all just assume it's going to be there. You get to decide what matters most now. Don't you lose hope the sky's not falling. I know you're in pain, just please don't show me. Zach, have you looked on YouTube? You've 20,000 views? This is just the beginning. And what's the end? Is this what you wanted? What I want is to not have to lose my best friend. It's not fair. I have nothing to give you. Zach. No future, nothing. Zach. So, what is it I plan to do with my one wild and precious life? It's really simple, actually. I just want to make people happy. And we'll go up, 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 but I'll fly. There it is! I can't do it without you. I need you. I am in love with you on like an exaggerated level. My son is on the radio! Oh my god! It all feels like some crazy vivid dream. It is a dream. You just get to be awake for it. Quitting is not an option. You have one life to live. 
What are you going to do with it? Awesome. That's, it's still surreal uh, to see that. So when the trailer came out, you texted me that it was out. Um, so I made my husband watch it while I ugly cried. <laughs> um, and the first thing he said, he, after it's done and I'm, you know, terrible, um, he goes, they better get Sammy right. She was my uh. favorite. <laughs> so oh, that's awesome. It's, again, it's just seeing these kids that yeah. I yelled at. Mm -hmm. um, on the screen. It's, it's amazing. Um, but your story, it's, yes, it's about movies and books and charts and songs, but, um, it's so much more than that. And you've already talked about it, but, um, there is such a strong element of faith to your story. And I actually, I don't think element is even the right, uh, turn of phrase. But some people are going to say, oh, it's a Catholic movie. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to say, whoa, that was not a Catholic movie. How do you respond mm -hmm. to that? I'm so excited to, to have people watch it and <laughs> just be surprised. <laughs> um, so our faith was just a part of how we live. Not a, a part. I mean, that sounds like it's compartmentalized. It's how we lived. And so this movie, I'm excited for people to see it because... It's, yes, we're Catholics, but it's not necessarily a Catholic movie. Mm -hmm. um, we're Christians, but it's not necessarily just for Christians. I think what this movie does is similar to what Clouds the Song does, which is draws people in wherever they are in their spiritual life, and they can kind of plug in. Um, one of the things we really, really wanted to avoid with this film and Justin was very careful to protect it from this as mm -hmm. well, is to become just another cheesy Christian film. You know, like there's so many bad ones out there that most people are just <coughs> never going to relate to. They're films that are just speaking to the choir, so yep. to speak. And we didn't want that. Yeah. I don't want that. We are real people with real struggles. I don't want us to come off as being polished and perfect and, yeah. you know, just super, super ultra holy. Because we're not. Yeah. But our faith allowed us to move through this experience mm -hmm. um, without falling into despair. Yeah. You know, like that's what held us up. And so I, wanna, I want people to be able to plug themselves into this film, no matter what their faith background is, where they are faith-wise at all, and connect with it. Mm -hmm. So that was important. Um, our faith is is shown in a way that it's just, it's a part of our life. Mm -hmm. That's how we live. Um, but we're not trying to sell you God. Yeah. We don't, we don't have to do that. God can sell himself. Yeah. We just show you this is how he operates in our life. Yeah. And um, that was really important to me, and it was really important to Justin as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope that people appreciate that. The, the feedback I've gotten so far, I did a press junket last week, which is weird that I did a press <laughs> junket. Um, but the feedback that I've gotten from the media is we, we did it. We provided mm -hmm. a film that doesn't feel like the typical faith-based. Yeah. It's, um, it's tangible to people. People can plug themselves in and connect with it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Um, again, if you have questions for Laura, uh, don't forget to put them in the comments uh, below here. Um, and and I, I so appreciate how you talk about how it wasn't a part of how you lived. It's just your faith is who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and it, in a very real way that I had the privilege of seeing, it was who Zach was. Mm -hmm. um, Zach wasn't a saint. Uh -uh. Um, <laughs> if you want to know that, you just talk to his siblings. Yeah, They'll right? tell you all sorts of <laughs> Um, he was a kid, but it's part of what makes his story attractive, too. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I saw, I had the privilege of seeing profound faith in that kid um, and how he led his peers to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, there was once I put uh, on a Facebook discussion group, I'm dating myself in ministry because at this point, teenagers were still on Facebook. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> we had a discussion group for our youth group. And at once I just put up the, um, the prompt, 
why do you like adoration? Because we had this group of kids that always wanted to do adoration. And so I, I wanted them to stop and think, like, why? Are you doing it because you like the music we play? What is it? Um, and several people responded with really beautiful answers. Uh, and then Zach responded, and nobody else did, um, because he just he's, he hit it so hard. He said, um, I like adoration because when you are suffering, people look away. They look away from your, your pain, but Jesus never does. Mm -hmm. um, he locks eyes with you, and he says, I've got this. Um, and how true that is. When we see suffering, we look away. And I can't tell you how many times now I see suffering. I see the homeless guy asking for money on the side of the road, and, and my, my gut is to look away, and Zach's in my head. Mm. When we're suffering, we look away, but Jesus never does. Um, and I remember the last retreat, we would do these weekend long retreats uh, at a camp in Wisconsin. Um, and I remember the last retreat that he was able to come on, um, everything culminated in an adoration night. Um, and he had a tendency the last couple of years, he would always wear this one, this this royal blue onesie, like zip up pajamas. On, he was what, yeah. well over six feet tall. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, but I remember him wearing that, um, at adoration and I was in a spot in the room where I could see he was right in front of me. Um, and everyone was praying and focused. Um, but I looked at Zach and he was locked on Jesus in the blessed sacrament and his arms were stretched out. Um, and he sat, he knelt and prayed like that for 45 minutes. Mm. Um, but he understood the cross in very real ways. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you can't have a story about suffering uh, or about cancer without suffering um, for everyone mm -hmm. involved. Um, and you talk a lot about um, one of my favorite phrases, redemptive suffering. Um, talk to me about how that played out in your story. Mm, it's so big. Um, I think with suffering, you can do a couple things with it. You can get angry about it. Um, you can focus on your own plan for life mm -hmm. and do everything, put all your energy into reaching that plan. And whatever suffering gets in the way, you know, just try to get rid of it. Or you can look at Christ on the cross and you can put it there. Hmm. And I think we all learned throughout this journey, and Zach especially, that the only path to peace is to hang it with Christ, mm -hmm. is to put it there. Um, and I think, that's, I think that's what's so attractive about Zach. I think that's what people see, but they don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear over and over again that, you know, this is a really sad story, but somehow I feel hopeful. Mm -hmm. That's what redemptive suffering is. Yeah. That's what, that's what it is, is, yeah, what I'm going through right now, not what I had planned, mm -hmm. not what I wanted, yeah. but there's something bigger going on here. Mm -hmm. There's a bigger story happening here, and I get to be part of it. Yeah. And I know that Christ can use this in ways that I can't even fathom. And I, I, that's what I love more than anything about our story, yeah. is we get to see it. Mm -hmm. We get to see it in spades. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts of people that suffer just as much as we did, just as much as Zach do, did that never get to see it. And, yeah. and my message to them is it's there. Yeah. It's there if you, if you unite it with Christ's suffering, he can use it in ways that you just, you can't see. And honestly, that's what my prayer was. Yeah. I write about that in the book of just like, Lord, how do I pray? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, just saying, okay, I have to turn this all over to you for your, whatever your will is. I have to yeah. do that. Um, but I want it to be for something big. I want one person's life changed forever, you know, because they knew that God could do that. Mm -hmm. um, and look what he did, yeah. you know, and we got to see it. So 
And look what he's doing. Oh, Still continues. doing. He keeps going. Yep. So, and, and really all we have to do, our only role in this is to just hand it over. Yeah. Not this, but this. This mm -hmm. is all we have to do. And then, you know, the other prayer that I've had throughout the years is, Lord, you open doors and we'll walk through them. Mm -hmm. And man, I mean, there's been times where I have to be like, okay, quit it. <laughs> <laughs> no more doors. <laughs> no more doors. Keep them, keep them shut for a while. And then when I say that prayer, they close. Wow. It's, it's really beautiful. But all we have to do is be willing. And I think that's, that's what Zach was. He was willing. And he was, I think, especially at that age, mm -hmm. high schoolers and even adults. I mean, I learned this from Zach, that we are so hung up on how we look <laughs> and how we are perceived. Mm -hmm. And death, knowing, you know, like he knew when he was going to die, yeah. that freed him up mm -hmm. from those worries yeah too much of our lives is cons of our lives are, are it's constrained by what we think other people are going to think mm -hmm. and we're too afraid to actually use the gifts that god's given us sometimes because we don't believe he's given us anything yeah and we think we have to be perfect before we can make an effect on this world yeah and the beauty of zach is he couldn't sing yeah like, he couldn't sing. <laughs> Seriously, I was afraid of him singing in public because I'd heard him downstairs, and he wasn't real good. <laughs> he was a great guitar player, but mm -hmm. he couldn't sing. Yet, look what God did. Yeah. Because Zach was willing to say, I'm going to give this a try. Yeah. And put himself out there. Yep. So. Wow. Um, in a moment, we're going to take a break and um, answer some questions after the break. Um, is there a, a lot of the people who are tuning in um, because of you know, we're here at NET, we're on the Y Disciple platform. Um, a lot of the folks tuning in are teenagers and people who work with teenagers and churches. Um, what is, what is the message you want them to take away from clouds? Hmm. I think what I was just talking about is don't be so constrained by what you think the world mm -hmm. expects of you. If you, can, if you can have courage, so take courage. We need people with courage right now yeah. to really just, you, you don't even have to be, you don't have to beat people over the head with faith. All yeah. you have to do is just walk alongside them. Just listen, just mm -hmm. be present in that moment. Be yeah. Christ to the people in your life. And that doesn't mean being preachy. Mm -hmm. It just means living like you trust God. Yeah, And don't let, you know, don't let things hold you back from using your gifts in this world. Mm -hmm. One of the, the gospel that Zach chose for his funeral was the one about the talents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was very adamant about that because he saw what can happen when you use your talents for mm -hmm. good to serve others. Um, if you just step out and do that and trust God with it, God will do the rest. You're responsible, really, for very little if yeah. you just allow God to, to work within you. So yeah. use what you've got. Don't let the world guide you in the way you move in the world. And just be kind to people. Be Christ to people. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, it's your last, no, probably not last chance. But if you have a question for Laura, again, put it in the comments. Um, and when we come back, we'll ask her some of your questions. I'm fine. I'm just so tired of it all. I'm tired of constantly trying to live up to other people's expectations of me. Actually, no, I'm not fine. I'm pretty beat down. Like, I mean, I can't be real with my friends at school or my parents. I know they love me, but they just don't get it. They didn't grow up with social media. They didn't grow up with every teacher wanting you to do four hours of homework a night. I want to live my life with a purpose, not just waste my time. With you guys, what everyone else wants me to be. I used to think faith was a bunch of rules, but now I realize it's so much more than that. Being a teenager is hard. Why Disciple is here to help. Why Disciple is an online platform that helps adults engage teens in meaningful conversation about the Catholic faith in small group settings. This digital toolbox offers a vast library of training videos, youth ministry tools backed by four decades of frontline experience in relational ministry. 
Why Disciple provides you trustworthy, catechetical content so that you can focus on engaging teens in faith mentoring relationships. Beautifully produced, story-driven videos captivate modern teenagers' hearts and minds, helping them explore the intersection of faith and life. All of this in one affordable subscription. Subscribe today. Great. Um, we are back. Um, we have a question here from Rebecca. Um, she says, are you pleased with how you and your family and Zach's story are portrayed in the movie? Um, and then follow up, how involved were you mm. in uh, the whole filmmaking process? Yeah, that's a great question. We are very pleased. We think each of the actors did a phenomenal job. Um, Mev Campbell, who plays me, she kind of nailed it. <laughs> From what I hear, it's really hard for me to be objective. Sure. Like, I don't know what I look like. Also, I... can we just sit with that statement for a minute? Nev Campbell, <laughs> who plays you. <laughs> I know, and she's so great. She's oh. such a, I got to spend a lot of time with her. Oh, that's awesome. I thought we were just hanging out, but turns out I think she was working. She was studying. She was studying me, so <laughs> um, she does a phenomenal job. Finn Argus, who plays Zach, oh, he's just... He's just a beautiful soul. We got mm. to, both he and Madison Eisman visited our home last year, about a month before our filming began. Um, Justin really wanted them to sort of just feel the vibe of our house. Mm -hmm. And it was so cool for us because it was like having the kids back in our house again, yeah. even Zach. It was like, oh, this is what it was like to have him here. I forgot that feeling, mm -hmm. you know? Um, he just, this is his first really big role, and it's his first time playing a real person. Oh, wow. And he immersed himself in it. He did a, an amazing job. So did Madison, who plays Amy. And then Sabrina Carpenter just does a beautiful job of playing Sammy. Nice. Those two just hit it off. We all hit it off um, with the actress. So they do a phenomenal job. Um, I would say that Tom Everett Scott does a beautiful job playing Rob in a quirky way. But Rob would never do this. <laughs> if people have seen the preview where he waves, Rob's like, yeah, I would never have done that. But <laughs> that's okay. He brings some levity to the film. Um, what was the other part of the question? Um, oh, how, how involved were you yeah. in the process? So we had probably way more access than most families do when they allow yeah. their story to be told because of our friendship with Justin. Mm -hmm. he and was Justin's the director. Dr Justin's the director. Um, so we were able to see the screenplay mm -hmm. throughout. We didn't have a lot of, of uh, we couldn't rearrange things and, and that kind of thing, but we could get into conversations and say, well, we would say it more like this. Oh, sure. We gave feedback, so we gave notes on um, what we liked, what we didn't like, and they took some of them. They left, you know, others. Um, we were able to, they asked if we could send up Zach's things to be part of the, mm -hmm. the set, and we did. Uh, a lot of the clothing that Finn is wearing is Zach's. Um, his crutches in the movie are Zach's, so. That's yeah. when I lost it. Yeah. Because I saw the crutches. Mm -hmm. That's. And, and the crutches were just kind of an extension. They were Zach. part of him. Yeah. yeah. So, so we got to do that. Um, I had an interesting thing happen <laughs> when I was up in Montreal. So that's where they filmed it. And we got to have a whole group of us go up. There were 70 of us, mm -hmm. uh, family, friends. All of Zach's friends got to go up, or a lot of them. And we're in the movie. We're actually extras. Um, and that was such a cool experience that we were told by the cast and the crew that the vibe on that set was different than anything they'd ever worked under because Justin insisted that kindness hmm. was key, that there would be no yelling, there would be no you know, rude behavior, and people that behaved that way were gone. And that apparently is unusual. Wow. Um, it can be a pretty rough industry. So that was different. They loved actually having us there. I thought we were just going to be a big pain in the butt, you know, like they were going to have to take <laughs> care of us. And Multiple people came up and were like, we are so glad you're here. It's h we hardly ever get to actually interact with the people who yeah. are portrayed. So that was really cool. Um, I was there for the very first, so the very first thing they do in filmmaking, 
um, b right before they start filming is the whole cast gets together and reads the screenplay together. Mm -hmm. It's the first and only time that happens yep. where they're all in the same room. So I got to be there for that. And there was this argument scene between my husband and I. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it just didn't play well. What they were arguing about was off. Mm -hmm. um, it was weird. It was clunky. It wasn't right. So afterwards, Nev was talking to Justin and said, we need to work on this. And Kara, the screenplay writer, was there too. And they were all agreeing it wasn't working. And I said, well, do you want to know what we were really arguing about? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> so I get to sit down around a table with them. So I was with Nev and Tom, who play Rob and me, mm -hmm. and Kara, the screenplay writer, and I all sat together. And we rewrote that argument scene. And I like to joke that I win. <laughs> Did like you rewrite really history? Write no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, now it play. Now it's more authentic. Mm -hmm. and so that kind of care was given to the, yeah. the film. Yeah. Wow. So we're very pleased. Wow, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, John asks, "Was Zach afraid of dying?" Yes, he was. Um, yeah. So dying was a topic that we could talk about in our family. Mm -hmm. um, but we did it sparingly okay. because nobody wants to talk about that all the time. So you do have to live with a certain kind of denial um, because death mm -hmm. is dark and you, you can't just, you know, live in that sort of despair all the time of like this is what's coming and, and you lose the joy in the moment. So we tried mm -hmm. to talk about it openly, but it was sparingly. Sure. He... And he lived that way. He lived looking for joy each day, despite knowing what was coming. Mm -hmm. um, but there was one particular evening I remember where everybody else was in bed. Um, the house was dark, and I just for some reason needed to check on Zach. So I went downstairs, and all the lights were off, and he was sitting in the living room by himself, sobbing. Mm -hmm. And I sat down next to him and said, you know, what's going on? And he shared with me, I'm, I'm afraid. I don't know what this is going to look like. Like, how is it going to be? And as a parent, that was really hard because as parents, most of the time we precede our children in yeah. life experiences. And I w had never experienced what he was going through. Yeah. And so how can I give him any guidance through this? Mm -hmm other than just our faith. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about, like, I get it. You know, yeah. And on some level, we're all afraid of dying because we don't know what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. But here's what I think is going on. You know, like, I think maybe Satan's prodding you a bit yeah. and making you fearful. Yep. Um, Remember that in this darkness, sometimes it's God's hand overshadowing mm -hmm. you and, and caring for you. Like, give this to God. Trust in God. Mm -hmm. Ask God. Ask the Holy Spirit to be here with you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we need to turn as parents when we, ha when we don't have the right answers. Mm -hmm. We have to trust because that's what we were having to do, too, as parents. We were having to trust right. God with this whole thing. So, yeah, he was absolutely, he wrestled with being afraid of death, and I think that's something we all do. Yeah. Yep. Um, the next question comes from Anna in Wisconsin. Um, she says, how can we best influence the world right now? Um, so many people turning away from God, thinking he must not be there, um, since there's so much suffering, mm -hmm. since there's so much unrest. Um, how would you respond to that? I think, so you and I were talking about this earlier, I mm -hmm. think that we have <clears throat> to be unflinching. Hmm. We have to be Christ's face, but unflinching. I think sometimes um, we need to be a little more thick-skinned. You know, we mm -hmm. need to be able to walk alongside people who might not be living a life that we understand, Yep. but still be Christ. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be preachy. We don't have to be shaming people. Mm -hmm. Um, we just live a Christ-like life. life. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Christ-like life. There it is. There. You got it. <laughs> um, because I think that's what's most appealing right now. Mm -hmm. 
people, there are so many words flying around right now. Nobody's mm-hmm. listening. Yeah. So just be it. Just be Christ. Mm. Yeah. Um, John Mark says, um, without seeing the movie, I can see that there's a huge message of hope in the midst of darkness. Um, how can we as adults inspire youth the way Zach inspired hope in others? I think that's so well stated. Mm-hmm. I think it all comes back down to just how we live mm-hmm. in the midst of all this. Yeah. So this is, this is our unique opportunity yeah. as a whole culture. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of living through what Zach lived through with the pandemic. We're all yeah. living that sort of state of mind now. We're all thinking about mortality mm-hmm. and restricted freedoms. You know, like Zach had to be plugged into a, a wall. Yeah. For a good portion of his teen years. Yeah. He had to wear a mask all the time. Yep. You know, so these are all things that we're having to deal with now on a cultural level. And I think yep. the way we inspire hope is just to be hopeful, <laughs> you know, and, and be joyful in it, even if it's mm-hmm. not our plan. Yeah. Yep. Um, the next question comes from actually a mutual friend of ours, um, Sister Mayor Juliana. Um, Mary Sister Juliana. Mary Juliana was the principal <laughs> at St. Croix Catholic uh, yes. during these years. Um, she's now in Alabama. Um, and she wants to know, um, is this a movie she could share with her middle school students? Um, is this mm-hmm. appropriate for 7th and 8th graders at a Catholic school? I think so. Um, it is PG-13, so I think you know parents have to be their guide mm-hmm. with that. There is a scene, so there is an F-bomb in it. We needed to get that PG-13 rating, apparently. <laughs> um, but it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an appropriate use of it, I guess. Um, and then there's also a scene where Zach and Amy are in her bedroom, which her mother assures me it never happened at the Adam Lee household. <laughs> um, you know, so those are scenes that are, they're there. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're... You know, he was a 17-year-old kid who mm-hmm. was dying. Yep. They end well. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it going further than you, know, <laughs> you really wanted to. Um, and it actually ends really beautifully and in a, um, a way that stays true to the faith, mm-hmm. too. So those are the only things that I would be concerned about with middle schoolers. But sure. yes, other than that, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, our, our middle schoolers need to see mm-hmm. how a young man who had limited time yep. chose to live with hope and mm-hmm. faith. So yes, I would absolutely, I would have no problem showing my middle schoolers That's this great. film. That's great. Um, Mary Grace wants to know, um, how did it end up on Disney Plus? Why Disney Plus? Why not in the theaters? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was supposed to end up in the theaters. That mm-hmm. was the hope. Um, and then COVID-19 happened. Mm-hmm. And actually, it's kind of one of the miracles of this whole thing. Um, Warner Brothers had originally produced this film, Mm -hmm. which was a big deal. But with COVID, they just didn't have a good landing place for this type of film. And so Justin kind of co-owned the production of it, which is really unusual. Like, they don't usually do those kind of deals. So this is kind of another one of God's protective hand in this. Um, So he was able to market the film. And Disney Plus said, we're looking for content, and this fits our bill. And that's a hard... There's a lot of boxes that need to be checked yeah. up with Disney. And and this film did it in spades. And they've been amazing to work with. They've been really great um, promoting Zach's movement, which is our way of, mm-hmm. you know, raising money for his fund. Um, so that's why it ended up on Disney+. Plus. We wanted to be able to share this film this year. Yep. And um, so streaming ended up actually being the perfect opportunity. I think more people will have access to mm-hmm. it now. Um, anybody can stream it on any computer wherever yeah. you stream movies, and Disney Plus really is an inexpensive option. It costs way less than going to a movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get it for a month and you cancel. That's fine. But yep. Yeah. So I hope a lot of people are able to tap in, and it's worldwide. Yeah. They're working in all sorts of new markets with Disney Plus too. So I'm really excited about that. Wow. Um, so you mentioned Zach's movement. Um, I believe our producers have put in the um, in the comments below a link to a place where you can donate to Zach's movement, um, the osteosarcoma fund. 
Uh, it should be there. If it's not, they're going to put it up right now um, <laughs> for you to just click uh, and, and make a donation uh, to Zach's movement um, in looking for a cure for osteosarcoma. Um, final question. Uh, this comes from Amy. Uh, she says, was your Catholic faith strong before Zach got sick? Mm -hmm. um, and was it hard for you to pray when he was sick? Mm, I love those questions. Um, I would say yes. My Catholic faith was strong before Zach got sick. Um, I did a lot of studying encyclicals, Bible studies, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, I prayed the rosary before Zach got sick. The first year of Zach's illness, though, and maybe even the second, I found it very difficult to pray. Mm -hmm. um, it's an exhausting thing mm -hmm. to be taking care of a family and a child who's sick. Your mind is constantly running and I had a really hard time just forming words of prayer. Yeah. I did a lot of numbing in front of bad television those mm -hmm. years. So it was those years that I really appreciated that there were people at the Adoration Chapel praying for our family. Mm -hmm. That That's when my church community could really carry us in that way. And you know, temporal ways too of bringing food and sending gas cards and things yeah. like that. They cared for us in that way too. Zach's last year of life though, I, I just got really close with Mary mm. because especially I, I used to not really like praying the Sorrowful Mysteries. I loved the Sorrowful Mysteries when Zach was dying because I could feel what Mary was feeling. Yeah. You know, like I could see it through her eyes and I could really understand it in ways yeah. um, that I didn't otherwise. And knew just insights with all of the mysteries too. So I really just allowed myself to sort of melt into the rosary. Mm -hmm. um, I wrestled with prayer. Mm -hmm. It was, it's hard to know what to pray for when you have a child who's sick and there are all sorts of... Um, people and just our, our western culture really we're terrified of death so that's mm -hmm. like failure so mm -hmm. you should be running all over the world looking for treatments for your kid okay there's yeah. that so should i be praying for zach being healed sure or do i just trust god mm -hmm. they seem to be in conflict with one another um what i landed on was christ's prayer in the garden of gethsemane i don't want this this yeah. is not what I wanted for Zach or my life, mm -hmm. but not my will. Yours be done, because yeah. I don't see the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And so I grew a lot in my faith, and I survived something I didn't think I could survive. Mm -hmm. You know, losing a child is something that I think most parents think I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. Yep. Um, but I am, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the messages of hope that I want parents to see too, no matter what yeah. you're going through with your children, you can survive big things when you have Christ walking yeah. alongside you and the Blessed Mother. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, we could do this. I know. Let's just. All day. Let's just keep going. <laughs> keep the cameras going, guys. No. <laughs> this is so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you out there who are um, considering doing this in a ministry setting, um, again, since that's a lot of our audience here, um, the movie is on Disney Plus, um, but I also worked with Laura to create discussion questions that go with the book uh, for teenagers, um, myself, um, some folks here on staff, and then uh, one of Zach's friends who's a youth minister, uh, Mariah Mulderink, helped mm. Mariah Smith uh, helped uh, craft them. So where would they find those questions if they did want to do it in a ministry setting? So that we have them on Zach's Movement awesome. page. There's a read button and there's book club questions that go along with that. Great. Excellent. Um, don't forget to watch the movie tomorrow uh, on, on Disney+. Plus. Um, thank you, Laura. Mm, my um, pleasure. Thanks to Katie uh, who at the Children's Cancer Research Fund who helped manage our crazy Katie's schedules awesome. and get you here. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks to our creative team here at NET uh, and for everyone who, who joined us today. Um, God bless you uh, and bless your work with young people. So. Thank you. Yeah.